you know, and it's interesting on the heels of this deal, we have a report talking about a possibility that we max out the cap on a quarterback based upon presumably a percentage of the cap. And I think that's coming from like, it's a reaction to the Deshaun Watson thing. It's a reaction to, I think Jerry's one of the loudest voices in that room. He's like, I don't wanna be in this situation. You know, I, uh, I'd like to have this thing slotted, easier to manage. And when I first read this report, I took it as we were discussing a separate cap for quarterbacks, misunderstood it, which I think is the way it should be. And if I had to wave a magic wand, I might make it that way to improve the game. Now, the reason that I think it would improve the game to have a separate cap for the quarterback would be because teams will stay together. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I think it's good for the league to have the LOB. I think it's good for the league to have certain teams that stick together. And the first one off the top of my head was Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. Well, when they started to fall apart and people had to leave, well, you can't pay everybody, you pay your, this is what happens when you pay your quarterback. All right, so here's the deal. Trevor Lawrence is making what, 255 million, something like that? 275, 142 Two, at signing, yep. guaranteed at signing, and 200 guaranteed after 2026. So Trevor Lawrence is rich. When I see these numbers, I look at it from a standpoint of timing and, you know, like who's going to be looking at this contract and saying, hey, pay me. It's going to be Tua, it's going to be Jordan Love. I think Jordan Love's going to make $56 million a year. Crazy. I think he's going to be the highest paid quarterback. I think Tua is going to slide in there under some of these other guys. If they do pay him, they have cleared space. Christian Wilkins, there's a couple guys that they, they kind of let walk there. That signaled that they're circling the wagons to pay Tua. Does Trevor deserve it? I don't even know what that question is anymore. Okay, like at one point, Derek Carr was the highest paid quarterback in the league. At one point, Jimmy G was the highest paid quarterback in the league. At one point, Joe Flacco was the highest paid quarterback in the league. So... Let me move the Zen out of the way. They're not paying me. They can't pay me. Lawyer fees. All right, so when it comes to quarterbacks in the NFL, I was recently looking at this, you know, ML football dive, cl dive climbing type summertime fill the time graphic. And it, it was basically the beer prices mm -hmm. at different NFL stadiums. And you know, you look up the Eagles actually have the most expensive beer in the league. Chargers are getting charged thirteen seventy five a brew. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much for a team like the Chargers. Those people have to drink to survive watching their team play. Maybe not anymore, but that's entrapment. The point is, is like you look at the Eagles. You told somebody in two thousand and ten a Miller Light was going to be fifteen dollars in Philly at the link. They said, "Are you fucking crazy?" You know, it's just like before you know it, the cost of a good just keeps going up. And when they have you, it's like in an airport, I'm going to pay fucking $30 for a bag of uh, dried fruit. You know, it's an exaggeration, but they have you there by the balls. The water is going to be a certain amount. Of, if you're an NFL owner, there is a scarcity of this good. If you're an NFL team, there's a scarcity of this good. Quarterbacks are going to continue to get paid more, you know, like from off season to off season, from month to month. I, I, I'm not gonna ask myself anymore, does this quarterback deserve that much money? Really the question is binary. Does the quarterback deserve an elite contract or do you do a workaround or let the guy walk? It's not binary. I guess there's a couple different options in there, but it's a yes or no. And if you look at Trevor Lawrence, as I said in 2022, it looks like a yes. Last year it looks like a no. I think you can throw 2021 out the door, right? And last year you can put an asterisk by it. I really do think that because of the injuries, uh, the way they 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 lost down the stretch, I thought the defense really struggled. You know, I think Ryan Nielsen's going to be better for them. Okay, I thought the the additions they made on offense did not bear fruit. The Calvin Ridley thing, it was like they just couldn't get on the same page. Whether it was the Kansas City game early in the season, and you know they're inches away from converting, or in the back of the end zone, just the timing being a little bit off, they were not a well oiled machine. So. When you look at it and you say, does he deserve it? I don't know. You're sitting there at halftime and you really need a beer. You walk up and buy a $15 beer because that's what they're going for. And, you know, some some years, I want to say this because Daniel Jones, we sat here a couple years ago and we were like, this is what you do. You just pay the quarterback. I have evolved 
Okay, I've been covering this for five, six years now, the NFL. When I played in it, I didn't have time to really form opinions. I was worried about the six inches in front of my face. You know, I wasn't worried about, are we gonna pay this guy? Are we gonna pay that guy? Um, now I'm looking at it and I'm saying, there are guys that are no brainers. There are guys like Trevor Lawrence who you're like, oh, I gotta, I gotta take a breath before I sign this check. It's a lot of money. Does he not deserve that much money? Is it eye popping? Yeah, but it's also eye popping that you have to pay fifteen dollars for a fucking beer, and people just accept that that's the way it is, and that's what these teams have to do is they have to accept that Trevor Lawrence is going to cost that much, and Tua might cost way more than you think he should cost, but that's the going rate for for a starting quarterback. And I would argue that sometimes you have a Daniel Jones or a Tua where you're like, yeah, everybody's not sold on it. I'd liken that to maybe popping up at halftime and they got Mike's hard. Are you going to be willing to pay fifteen dollars for Mike's hard? Or are you going to come back in the third quarter? You know, it's up to you. Depends on you know how thirsty you are, how you feel. I think you could make an argument that the Dolphins might not pay Tua, but and I've made that argument. But they're going to pay Tua, um, and and this is the way it goes. You could, Trevor Lawrence gets paid too. When we were seventeen, I kicked a bunch of the Mike's hards under the sectional in the basement. Yeah, and Dad found them. And he's like, what's going on here? And I was like, well, I didn't know they were alcoholic. Uh, you know, I was mm -hmm. lemonade. And then he was like, well, why'd you kick them under the couch? Mm -hmm. And I said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but to your point, Daniel Jones, I look at it as percentage of cap. Is that fair? Yes. And it all the names at the top of that list are Burrow, Josh Allen, Herbert, Lamar, Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, Trevor Lawrence, Jared Goff, Matthew Stafford, and then Daniel Jones at 13. You start to look at it a little funny at 18. And it's been a couple of years now. And it's been a couple of years. So I, I, I think you're exactly right. It's easy to point to the record, Trevor's record as a starter being 20 and 30. Yeah. And, and not feeling too groovy about it, but. What are your options? You know, it's, you're, you're in the stadium. You don't have any way out. You can't go to the fucking Exxon and get something cheaper. This, it is what it is. And so to your point as well, it's like, uh, you, you got to get by with what you got. Or you could spin the wheel on a bridge and you can, you can do the unconventional thing, which is letting a franchise quarterback walk. That doesn't happen a lot. So, you know, and it's interesting on the heels of this deal, we have a report talking about a possibility that we max out the cap on a quarterback based upon presumably a percentage of the cap. And I think that's coming from like, it's a reaction to the Deshaun Watson thing. It's a reaction to, I think Jerry's one of the loudest voices in that room. He's like, I don't wanna be in this situation. You know, I, uh, I'd like to have this thing slotted, easier to manage. And when I first read this report, I took it as we were discussing a separate cap for quarterbacks misunderstood it, which I think is the way it should be. And if I had to wave a magic wand, I might make it that way to improve the game. Now, the reason that I think it would improve the game to have a separate cap for the quarterback would be because teams will stay together. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I think it's good for the league to have the LOB. I think it's good for the league to have certain teams that stick together. And the first one off the top of my head was Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. Well, when they started to fall apart and people had to leave, well, you can't pay everybody. You pay your, this is what happens when you pay your quarterback. T Higgins just got franchised. Okay. Like maybe there's a way to keep everybody happy. Maybe there's a way to keep Brandon IU happy in San Francisco. Teams can bring players up and not be penalized for drafting well. You know, like you shouldn't be penalized for drafting well. In my opinion, you should be able to continue to take care of those players. And you certainly shouldn't be penalized for finding a really good quarterback in the draft or going out and trying to pursue a quarterback and turn a, a franchise around right now. Like that to me, and you could say, hey, this could create a parity effect where parity goes away a little bit because um, you know certain teams, they'll be the haves and the have nots, right? Tyreek Hill is still on the Chiefs. Yes. For instance. Tyreek Hill is still on the Chiefs. But I think it also will allow teams to invest in, in backup quarterbacks a little bit more like you know, you got somebody you want to hold on to. Say Aaron Rodgers wanted to stay in Green Bay a couple more years, and you know he's going to go any year now. And you had to pay Jordan Love a certain amount. Say you knew Jordan Love was really good, and you wanted to stash him away. You can pay that guy, right? I think it's good for the league when fans don't have to buy a bunch of different jerseys, right? I think the league's always turning dials, right? They're 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 pulling on levers. One of the levers they're always pulling on is is the safety lever. 
right? Like how much safer can we make the game and still have it be watchable? You know, we see that all the time with rules that come up every off season. They're also pulling the watchability lever, which sometimes, you know, that has to do with scoring. You know, it has to do with the bottom line, which is points, but it's really about keeping the quarterback safe so that that player can be safer than everybody else, complete a bunch of passes, throw touchdowns, keep the scoring up. And I think the third lever they pull is the business lever. And that one's a, a harder deal to understand. I don't pretend to understand it, but what, what I will say is like, with Jerry Jones or whoever it is, presumably complaining about having to pay a, a franchise quarterback, what we should be doing if we're the NFL is talking about a separate cap for quarterbacks, because at some point the popularity of this game is gonna outpace this ownership group's ability to to pay players in a way that's commensurate with what they're doing for the business and they've pulled uh, that lever in a different way in the past like you were a beneficiary of, of the old cba of the old cba yeah. but owners didn't like that they're giving 50 60 million dollars to any pick that you make in yep. the top five it wasn't sustainable from an ownership point of view so they introduced the rookie salary structure that's what they're doing they're just they're making little adjustments and this would be one that would be big and change the game for sure but what i am saying is you know eventually this game if you're an nfl owner you're sitting in that fucking ivory tower and you're talking to your buddies about growing the game and you're talking about a game in dublin and you're talking about globalizing the game and popularizing the game and if we can get youth numbers up which have been declining and still the game's really popular so if we can get it more popular play 60. if we can get flag football going you know integrate kids into a system where they, they're getting into football make it more accessible for people all around the, the globe like a market in london a market in mexico or canada or games all over the place that to me is like that you have stated your goal your goal is to be a global game at that point what do you think players are going to want to make at what point do the owners that are complaining about counting every dollar right now and not saying hey we have a ton of fucking money let's just clear this whole thing up and pay the quarterbacks a certain amount and make it detach from the cap that to me is the kind of ownership we need the hypothetical situation where the owner's like hey bro i got plenty of money let's let's push to where the teams that are rewarded draft well find quarterbacks and have owners that are cash fluid that is coming like at some point if we are successful as a league and it's global and it's a lot more profitable that's coming and i wonder if th these owners i know they have the money but are they willing to part ways with it there are Saudi groups, and we talk about this with other sports, like there's global money out there that, that can dwarf some of these billionaires that own NFL teams. And so I look at it eventually as like a crossroads for the NFL where it's like, and the quarterback caps part of it, we need owners who can fund these type of, type of things, you know, like, and are willing to pay. Every year this cap's gonna go up, Every year, quarterbacks are going to be more important. That's the way the game's going. So I just think it's twofold. We're talking about like a system that's imperfect. How could they fix it? And then on top of it, like if they fix it, could this ownership group that currently exists in the NFL keep pace? I don't think so. I think eventually if, if they meet their goals, they're going to need more money, you know? Yeah. And, and owners are willing to spend it. What do you think is a good number of teams who think they have a legitimate shot to win a title before the season starts? What's that what's that sweet spot out of 32 teams? I think it's 10 to 12. And then and then there's a group in the middle that's like, "Hey, a lot of things would have to break right." And then there's, you know, teams like the ones I was on for 8 years where you're like, "The players, your job is to sell a dream to the players, and that might work, but people upstairs know generally and the veterans know." this is not the year we're after something different but you know in that in that group of 10 teams you know i would have counted the eagles in that middle 10 when i signed with them the back 10 uh you know the eagles were on a list or two that put that team 2017 in that lower tier but internally i think we knew we were we were probably in that middle tier and everything did break right you know what i mean and then some but for the most part it's 10 teams now, if you had your quarterbacks and you keep everybody together and you could build a program, you could be more patient. I think it's better for player development. Um, I think it's better for the fans. Now, you could say, hey, what happens if you have a separate cap for quarterbacks and there's kind of like a super max tier? Mm -hmm. What happens to teams uh, with quarterbacks on the rookie deal? Is that no longer a loophole? You know what I mean? So I think you could get creative with how you compensated teams that are on rookie that have quarterbacks on rookie deals you know like 
there, there's all types of tinkering that you could do with the business side of football to make it more palatable doing this, in my opinion. I know it seems out, does it seem outside the the box to you? No. Okay. Niners keep knocking on the door. Brock Birdie, seventh round quarterback, million dollar cap hit in 2024. So that's where you're saying where money, more money could be allocated elsewhere. Well, other teams are going to catch up because other teams are going to be able to invest heavily in quarterbacks. And like, usually that's a, an ace in the hole, having a, a rookie deal quarterback. And so that's not going to be an advantage as much if you go to like a separate cap. Mm -hmm. And I do think for quarterbacks who are sitting there on a rookie deal and they're looking at that number and they're saying like, why can't I get there quicker? Well, you're going to have to either pay them quicker and put them in that category, or it could turn into a deal where it's like restricted free agency every year for rookie co deal quarterbacks. So if you've got, if you're trying to to skimp on not paying a quarterback that super max deal, and you're CJ Stroud, you know, like, and you're sitting there and you're like, bro, I'm one of the best fucking three, four quarterbacks in the league every year up to the max, which is probably set by a percentage of the cap which would be fine because you have to cap that number or else it becomes like a bidding war mm -hmm. where it's like, and maybe the free market's a way to go there. And eventually That's these quarterbacks are going to English Premier League. For yeah, and, and I don't know what's so scary to us about that. Um, no cap. Yeah, no cap. You got it. So, I mean, so I, I, just think, I just think there's ways to tinker with it where, you know, for every, in this hypothesis, for every hole you could punch in it, there's a way you could balance it out. That's what the NFL does. They they do a tremendous job of just pulling the levers to keep a balance competitively, you know, because it is the most competitive game in 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 the world. I mean, like EPL, we talk about the EPL. You know, there's a couple clubs that are in, have a chance to win it, and there's some that get relegated, and that's yeah. competitive. Nowhere and, near the amount of parity, and with huge, massive investments from like Saudi groups and others exactly and and on top of that it's like you look at american sports it's hands down the most competitive sport you know i'd say hockey you know you never know sometimes and that's a really difficult playoff but what i would tell you is from a competitive balance standpoint you can get beat any any week look at the cardinals this year beating the cowboys right. and so on and so forth i mean there there are examples like that all over the board i mean you're afraid to bet two touchdown favorites in yeah, the NFL. Yeah, for sure. Do you think owners that have recently signed a quarterback might not want to do this because they see that the other teams are going to have to keep going up and keep going up? Like, if I had signed Joe Burrow a year and a half ago, I wouldn't want this deal because, like, you're letting Jerry Jones off the hook. You are letting Jerry Jones off the hook in the, in the immediacy, but then once you're a contract down the line, everything resets to where it's like we're all on the same. I think it would need to be instituted <sighs> at a future date. No question. You can't come in right now with it. But I, I, I really do think there's something interesting about this concept of paying quarterbacks separately. I think one of the things that would come up would maybe be, you know, players that are position players being pissed off and saying, but like for me as a position player, I knew who buttered my bread. You know, maybe it was the fact that sometimes we didn't have one that was upright in St. Louis that, that was healthy or a franchise quarterback, whatever you want to say. You know, I know what that's like. And I'm not going to sit here and complain that Tom Brady's making that much more than me or that Jalen Hurts or Carson Wentz or one of these guys that, that put us in the position at that moment to win. I'm never going to say, like, hey, we, we should make more than quarterbacks. I don't know what you guys think, but, like, would you say 30% of a team's cap should fairly be allocated to a quarterback? Because I think it, there's an argument to be made that it could be 50. It seems unfair, but in actuality, when you, when you make up the probability of that team's success and thus the, the playability of being on that, like – the experience of being on that team, so much of it is dictated by the quarterback. You know, to, so to me, I don't know what that number is, but I wouldn't be frightened or offended if I walked into a locker room where the quarterback's making $70 million in a given year, but we have a $270 million cap. Right now it's 255, but let's say it goes up and quarterbacks go up accordingly. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna walk in and be like, what the fuck is this guy doing making all this money? I'm just happy he's here. And and I don't know that everybody every player thinks that way, but I do. I well, mean, it, separate the two, two different kitties, which is basically what you're saying. Yeah. So you, got, you got the quarterback cap and then you have the rest of your team cap. And I know that what Jerry's doing or whoever owners are doing, they're they're mitigating costs. They're trying to keep the cost down, which is why I'm saying to do the right thing, to do the thing that makes sense 
maybe we need different owners. Yeah. And in the NBA, it's a 35% max on a player. But of course, you have more players. So I think something like 25%, 30% would make sense. Whatever it is, it would just simplify things. I just think about teams that, that break up, man. And I'm like, you know, look at the Super Bowl in the NFL. We just talked about it with the NBA. You know, one of the reasons the NBA to me is like lukewarm, milk toast to me, and not being a hardcore basketball fan is I don't, you can't get behind a team. Like things change too often. Um, we see we see it play out with the parody and we look up and we're like, the ratings suck. And I had somebody in the YouTube comments who was like, you're sitting up here speaking for the average fan. How do you know based off ratings what the average fan likes? I'm like, literally, it's in the answer there, dude. It's literally, I'm speaking for directly for the average fan. What is the metric that tells you the viability of a product other than how much it's being consumed by the consumer? Of course. I, I, like, I, it's like, what's a mo what did a movie do at the box office? Bro, bro oh, yeah, billion dollars. And, and, and there's a difference there because a box office movie could inherently suck if you're a real appreciator of movies. But there's no football teams like that. Right. Like <laughs> an entertaining great football team or an entertaining great basketball team, it's gonna be correlative. It's yeah. I just think the ratings thing, when we talk about the NBA, the the consumability of these finals objectively has not been great. And I look at the NFL as like we had Kansas City and San Francisco, a fucking rematch, two teams that nobody was shocked were there. In football, it's about having the best players playing on Super Bowl Sunday. And I think it's also about having the best franchises going deep into the playoffs. And the reason football's tough is it's not so easy to flip the script. You as an organization have to be good. Like you have to be sound, you have to have a vision. And if you don't, it's gonna take a couple years. That's what makes the NFL great, is it's really fucking hard. You can't turn it around in one year by signing Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal and all that stuff. And in basketball, that didn't work. But everybody, when it happened, was like, oh, they're going to be a fucking, they're going to be a bitch. And the you can't do that to the that. Panthers right now. You no. can't do that to, and I know the Suns weren't trash before they came, but I'm just, you can't turn it around like that in football. So, yeah, a team that has a super max type quarterback and they're taking advantage of the cap and they're drafting well are going to be ahead of you. But you still have an unbelievable degree of parity. Like, the odds on a Niners Chiefs rematch is 14 to 1. Yeah. And I and I don't think if you change this things would change to the to the point where the game loses that parity. I think it the game has the right amount of parity in the NFL it's just right, but I also think keeping some teams together is is a good thing and 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 these quarterbacks are going to have to get cuz at some point somebody's going to come in and be like, "All right, they're fucking around with y'all, Joe Burrow." They're fucking around with y'all, Dak Prescott, whoever it is. It could be two oh one off season. Come play in Uzbekistan. Mm. Well, I know they're not very cash fluid there, but like come play in Saudi Arabia. You know? Uzbekistan's not gonna work. <laughs> and they're because most guys in the NFL are 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 susceptible to be being thrown cash at them. They play a violent sport where they're not guaranteed money. So eventually Something's going to come to a head where it's like, hey, the owner's got to ante up a little bit or else somebody else will. Football is always going to be fine, but who's going to hold the keys? Is it going to be America? Is it going to be the NFL, the brand? Protecting the brand is going to cost you money. Congratulations, Trevor. Yeah, Trevor, you got a whole think piece fucking coming out because of your contract. If Doug can get the turnovers down, great. He was at like 3.4% last year. That was the 12th worst, worst in the league not acceptable you could point to a lot of throws where you're like dude you just don't have to make it also sometimes he just dropped the ball yep like literally he dropped he he, he does not take of care the of the football. football okay you know who else is up in that top worst 10 is josh allen different player you'll take that with everything he does and then brock purdy so the point i would make is if you can just protect him because injuries are a thing and if you can keep those turnover worthy plays down you'll be okay. And we're talking about a percentage point here. Two plays a game. Just don't, those two fucking plays a game, dude. Just to, And then you're in the C.J. Stroud and Joe Burrow echelon, which is like a 2% turnover uh, worthy play average. I know it's way boiled down. You look back at Doug Peterson uh, in Philly. Carson had a lot of turnover worthy plays. You know who didn't? Nick Foles. And all I'm saying is that offense was way different. It was a lot of RPOs, easy throws. Nick made some big throws. But he just, he followed the fucking map. 
You know what I mean? And that's what Trevor's got to do a little bit more of. I know they don't run as many RPOs, but it is a timing offense where he's going to get the ball out at times quick. They get get the ball in the perimeter. Just make it easy, man. Don't try to don't try to win it all uh, every time you touch the ball. Gabe Davis in that room. Brian Thomas, LSU. Mm-hmm. Nice weapons.